What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 17, it's sloggy season man, you know what time it is, sloggy season and uh, yeah today I'm just going to try and get for as much as I can really, including uh, the first three games of our Europa League group stage, Bournemouth's first ever venture into European football, where we'll play Nice at home, Applewell away in Cyprus and Genk in Belgium as well, so yep loads to get through in the league, the EFL Cup and the Europa League as well, so let's crack straight on, our first game is indeed Bournemouth history at the Vitality as we Welcome to French side Nice, who I would say we're battling with for top spot in this group. Let's get off to a winning start in our European debut. Come on, you cherries. This is a good Nice side. Don't get it twisted, man. Like, I know we should be targeting top spot. Anything below top two and qualification is a massive failure, but... You look at that lineup, man. They've added some Premier League talent to it. Lucas Digne and Emerson Ro a Royale at fullback. Um... Yes, Jack Clark continuing his great start to the season. They got the Brentford boys, David Rare and Brian and Buemo. Uh, they got Undai Shima, who was a great, I think, Burundian international, tough tackling DM, and they've got Hinkapi, who is uh, one of the best young South American centre halves in the game and grows really, really nicely. So this is a good team. But I often say this, if you can get off to a winning start in your European group, it's a major, major bonus. And equally as important, if you can win the first of your two head-to-head -head games against the side that you think you'll be ta uh, battling with a top spot as well. In this case, it is Nice. So, of course, don't forget in Europe, the tiebreakers go head-to-head -head before goal difference. So if you win the first of the two, it's a massive luxury. You, know, you can draw the reverse fixture and you'll still finish above them even if you finish on level terms. Getting off to a winning start in a European group is so crucial. Nice are an excellent team for an R2G in France, by the way, which doesn't seem to get that much love in terms of where players want to start their CMs. But, uh, you know, Nice, fabulous place on the, uh, on the south of France. Really, really beautiful place. I'd love to visit one day. Uh, they haven't won a major honour in over 25 years now, I believe, as well. Never won a European honour. Oh, dear. And... Um, they have three lovely kits in the game as well. Lovely, lovely kits. Um, and the only, the only negative to Nice is they don't have their real stadium in the game, which is a new build. It was opened about 10 years ago. And uh, it's really nice. It, it's called the Allianz Riviera. And it actually looks like a, a miniature version of the Allianz Stadium in Munich as well. So, yeah, I, I highly recommend Nice if you're looking for a French RTG. And not a lot of people do. But maybe now's the right time with PSG going through their uncertain era, if you will, in Ligue 1. It's Dominic Solanke, bags our second. 32 minutes to go, but I think that's going to do it. A win on match day one of Bournemouth's first ever European game. Yep, the board of us has reached the final of the Europa League in our first season. And initially, I was a bit like, oh, that's quite tough, that. But actually, come to think about it, when you look at how the team has developed over the course of this RTG, I think that's a realistic aim for us this season. Why not? Anything less than the semi-finals, I'll say, is a failure, but that's the perfect way to start. One from one, and a great beginning to your life in Europe. Right, next up, Leeds away down the road, aiming to extend our good start to the season with a big win here and go back into second place. Early doors, can't predict anything just yet, but if we keep up this good start, why not try and keep ourselves in the top four until Christmas time? That's going to be my aim. Come on, you cherries. Yeah, sometimes it's like hard to think of the end goal, if you will. Um, is something you should be striving for constantly. But if you can strive for those mini goals, you often talk about this, you know, a lot of successful people say they break their main goal down to like mini goals that are steps along the way. Let's talk about like money, for example. Say they want to get to a million pounds, which is crazy. It's like, all right, well, let's, let's, let's focus on making a thousand first, you know? And, and then hopefully we'll get to 10, and then maybe to 50, and then maybe to 100, and maybe to a quarter, you know? And then breaking it down like that. Um, you know, I say small goals. <laughs> Maybe earning a million pounds isn't the best example, but you know what I mean? It's like you break it down as you're going towards the main thing, you know. That's what we need to do. Yeah, Challenge if it will be amazing. But let's let's concentrate and get into November first in the top four, yeah. Anyway, good start here. Still nil-nil, but that first goal is coming, and there it is. Dom Solanke once again continuing his fine start to the season. Made him captain with NATO now dropping to the bench, and Solanke is leading like a leader should. Four in six for the man that signed that big extension. Yeah, I try not to get too personal these days, so forgive me for, for sharing a little anecdote here, but I guess I can actually use a, a personal example as well to help, help myself kind of uh, explain my point a bit here. You know, many years ago, and I say this before, you know, I'm ashamed of it, but not going to try and deny it. I was, uh, I was a bit of a drug addict as Jack Clark scores 
against a team where it all began for him at Ellen Road. And what a start. The ex-Leeds Academy ground has had, man, as we double our lead. I was a, I was a bit of a drug addict, you know. I'm, I'm ashamed to admit it, but it's true. And I'm not going to try and deny it. But to me, it was all about just taking it in stages, you know. Could, could, I, could I go a week? Could I go a week sober? You know, not, not think about could I give it up forever. Could I go a week sober? And then could I go a month sober? And then three months? And then six months? And then a year? And then basically... I just managed to conquer it, you know? Whereas if you try and go cold turkey and you try and do it all at once, sometimes that can be too daunting of a task. If you break it down into steps and steps in time, things do become a lot simpler. Yeah, William Matty Cash. And, oh, that's just comical. <laughs> Is he trying to buy a free kick there? Because it did not work. <laughs> that was just awful. Thankfully, he redeems himself. And Zabani, oh, no, 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 no. I see two white shirts in the middle. It's rolled across to one. And oh, what a block, Vinicius. What a goal saving. I love this guy, man. Absolutely love him. Brought him in from the blades. I said we're going to convert him to BPD. And he has not showed any kind of signs whatsoever of struggle in that new role. He's, he's a brick wall in the back, mate. Yeah, guys, if you are looking for a tough, tackling, physically strong, defense-minded player... It's also comfortable bringing the ball out from the back and can be interchangeable between CDM and CB as well. I think Vinicius is probably one of the best you'll find. So if you're doing a CM and Sheffield United go down in the first season, bring him in for season two because he is uh, he's going to be available on a reasonably cheap deal and he's going to be worth his weight in gold. This game is done and the question is can we add a third? Pedro Neto, wonderfully done. Cunha denied. And tip behind for a corner. The game's over though. It's it's finished. Only question is, can we add a third goal late? I think we can. We do indeed. Dom Solanke wraps it up, and Bournemouth have ran out comfortable winners. Yep, we're dreaming of the Champions League. But let's just try and stay in the top four come Christmas time as well. Dom Solanke heads in his second, his fifth of the season already as well. And Bournemouth leave Ellen Road with three points. And just before our third game today, uh, the EFL Cup third round, real quick look at the academy. Obviously, this year we're taking a, uh, a gap year. A gap year. Um, my goodness, that's an old reference. Uh, as you can see, how the youth boys are looking. Uh, still so far, the best two remain. The American striker, Frank Ross, who the, the shooting is, is low, but he's got tremendous pace. Excellent curve. I do think he'd probably be more suited to the wing, but I don't know what you guys say with me. I find it quite hard to find youth academy strikers. I, I I don't know why. It just always seems as though like CAM. I can find about 20 CAMs, but I can never find a good youth striker. And of course, Ben McKenzie as well. We're training that defensive work rate up to high, but the rest stay on balance. And I do get asked quite often in the comments, you know, I see you guys saying, Docs, why aren't you putting development plans on your youth players? Especially for younger players, I prefer natural growth. So it all goes up in all the areas, balanced, clues in the name, balanced, as opposed to stats being too lopsided. It's just personal. Personal preference, really. Anyway, um, yeah, following game, Hull City as the challenge side come and takes on the Vitality. Aims to get through to the fourth round of the EFL Cup with a win here against the second tier Tigers. Come on, you cherries. Hull have got some, uh, some really decent young talent at their team. I know Fabio Carvalho is on loan there, but of course we've snapped up Jacob Grease in this save, who's a, uh, a really good CB. Uh, and if you're not keeping your eye on the championship right now, you might not be aware what Jaden Filagine is doing. But uh, he's an ex-Aston Villa youngster. As Beto smashes in his first for the club. Ex-Aston Villa youngster. Moved on permanently for this season. And he's having a fantastic debut year in the North East. He tries to fire a hole to a playoff place. Even so, Beto fires in his first for the club. 1-0 up. And, you know, this season, I do want to win another major honour. we got one. I I've got the taste for it now. What's that Chris Ball quote? Now I've got a taste for it. I'm sort of addicted to it. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna get another one. Yeah, I've had, I've had one, and now I'm being greedy. I, I'm addicted. I want more major honours with, uh, with Bournemouth. And why not? Their first of, oh, first of the EFL Cup. Jaden Anthony off the post, still one 0 but that second goal is coming. Bournemouth attacking with intensity. Oh, what a ball! What a ball! Aaron Connolly with the finish, levels it for Hull. You know, speaking of, speaking of young players that might not live up to their potential, Sophie and Diop, Aaron Connolly, he showed so much promise as a youngster. I'm not sure he's going to make it now, but um, you never know. You never know. He's found level here, though. 1-1. One, one. I mean, fair enough. No one thought Connolly was going to be a well-beater, but I, I did expect him to have a bit of a better career than the one he's had so far. Although, to be fair, 
it's still early doors. It's still early doors. And you'd have to see it when a player does start to blossom a little bit in their, uh, their mid-twenties. Just goes to show you that life is full of ups and downs. It's not just a, a linear trajectory. You never know, man. I'd love to see the comeback story. Him, uh, him firing with Hull and then uh, turning into an established Premier League striker. You never know. It will be class. We saw it. And as Dan Neal gets his first of the season and makes it 2-1, I think we should be able to, uh, to get through from here. I think that is going to do it. And um, Bournemouth survive a little scare and make it into the fourth round. You know, I say this often, but the EFL Cup is not the most prestigious of honours. When you do qualify for Europe, it becomes your lowest priority. But still a trophy, still a trophy. And you know you'd still prefer to have it in the cabinet than to not. So uh, we did the draw real quick for the fourth round. And we'll see who we got. Fingers crossed for another EFL side in the following round where we will be taking on. Here we go. In fact, we've been there anyway. Carabao Cup, last 16, pits us against... Where am I? Oh, Sutton United. Sutton United in the last 16. Lowest ranked team remaining as we take on the fourth tier side at home. That is, officially, the easiest tie we could have had. We should be heading to the quarters. And as we see, Jack Clark win player of the month. Well deserved as well, man. He has been absolutely flying to start the season off. Uh, next up, Crystal Palace home. Aim to keep our really good start to the season going. Look for our fifth win in a row in all competitions. Let's go get it. Come on, you cherries. Interestingly enough, if you want to briefly touch on this, you would have seen pre-game. Um, we got the animation saying this is my 100th game as, uh, as Bournemouth manager. Um, why, if EA can track stats like that across a multitude of seasons, you know, because it's season three, so now all the games have added up from season one, season two, season three, uh, to, to showcase that we've now hit 100 games. Why, if they can track that star? why can't they track stats for players as well as Jack Clark? Oh, hits the post. And Palace will get it away. That's the one thing that confuses me. Because I've seen the argument of people saying, oh, the reason why they can't track stats over seasons is because they don't have the capabilities. Well, obviously, that's not true if they can do it for how many games that a manager has played. If they can see how many games they've played, and you can even see the full stats in the My Career section, then why not for players? Well, it, it's one of the things that does kind of confuse me about it. If they can track it for the manager... Then why not for the players as well? Tough game, and it's still dead up to 0 0. I thought it be a banker, but evidently not. It's Cunha, must finish. Oh, yeah, rips it in off the bar, and that will give us the lead. You know, so, sometimes it's games like this where you take it on a far weaker side. Palace's lineup isn't that great. And all it takes is just a one goal. Once you get it, it's like the pressure's off. So the earlier you get it, the better. You no, know, you can play without pressure most of the game. But even if you get it later, you just know now you've got to stay tight defensively. Tough start for Cunha. Only his first of the year, but better to get it late rather than never. Works both ways. Yeah, whilst it is true that one goal leads are something I never feel overly comfortable with, it is true there are certain games where I think it's all you really need. It was in this case, Bournemouth with another win and the run continues. Right, next up, Apple away in Cyprus. Aim to keep our winning run in all competitions going and make it two from two in the Europa League group stage. First ever European away day. Let's get the three points to take home. Come on, you cherries. I mentioned before, but that is, that is one thing which um, kind of... I don't know what the word is here, frustrates me, upsets me, disappoints me, I don't know, um, about supporting a team that are pro probably never going to play, not in my lifetime at least, European football I don't think, um, is, is away days, you know, as Billing makes it 1-0, we briefly touched on this last season, but it, it's one of those things where it's like, it must be so cool, like when you are supporting a, a big club that do play European football regularly as well, you know, waiting for the draw and thinking, oh, we might get a trip to Seville away against Patisse or Seville, or, you know, oh, we might go to, like in this case, Cyprus and, and Apoel, or, you know, oh, we can have a weekend break in Rome if we draw against Roma like Brighton were, you know. It must be so cool to get the chance to, 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 to follow your team away across countries and uh, some, some fantastic cultural cities and places as well. That's the one thing where it's like, I love my team. I love everything about my team. I wouldn't change anything about that. But if there is one thing I could change, <laughs> I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to get the chance to one day get to go away to, uh, like I said, some some European European cities, if you will. It's Hamid Traore almost blasted in the second, keeps the chance alive, and Jack Clark does 
for him. Bournemouth tune it up in Cyprus and absolutely flying out of the blocks this season. Yep, job done after two early goals in Cyprus and back-to-back -back wins to start our Europa League group campaign off. I said when it was drawn, not, not an easy group, one we should be targeting qualifying in and now a third the way through, I'd say definitely got a target top spot from here. Andre Lunen, by the way, four clean sheets in a row now. He's doing heaps of laundry. Right, next up, both manager clubs back-to-back, -back, either side of an international break, starting with an away day trip to Old Trafford. And after the atmosphere on Sunday, my goodness, man. Let's see if we can do what Liverpool couldn't and finish them off here away from home. Come on, you cherries. Yeah, I must say, I've seen some cracking Manchester United versus Liverpool games in my time, but that one ranks up there as one of the very best, if not the best, to be honest. It was such a good game, it had everything in it. Um, so much drama, so much late drama as well, both in normal time and in extra time as well. And um, great, great resilience from Rashford, you know, missing that golden opportunity earlier in the game, only to go and fire in what was a crucial leveller. Uh, showed a lot of composure for that goal as well. And uh, obviously the, the winner, excellent breakaway. But the, the thing that sort of like, you know, summed up the game and how chaotic it was was that obviously Amak got sent off for taking his shirt off and doing that iconic Messi-esque celebration as well. So uh, it was just a brilliant, brilliant game. Brilliant ending. And uh, certainly, certainly one to remember, no doubt. It's Dominic Solanke fires in the opener. Bournemouth in front and saying to Guardiola's Blues, we're going nowhere. Yes, Tyler, lovely flick there. Can you keep running? Go on, mate. bang it, top corner. Oh, good stop by Onana. Yes, we're still leading by one, but that, that second goal is on the cards. It haven't really been trolled by Manchester United at all. We're good from set pieces this year, and there's another one to prove it for good measure. Dominic Solanke has now scored his seventh goal in eight games. Knock out that corner flag, delivered a KO blow to Manchester United. This is unbelievable form, not just from Solanke, but Clark and the Cherries in general. Well, I said a lot, man. Form, as we know, is so overpowered. We need to downplay it a little bit, but the longer we keep this runner going, like I said, break those goals down into smaller steps, stay in the top four come Christmas time, in this sort of form, we could be top. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, Rasmus heads in that. Deep cross to the far post. I have to say the uh, the lighting here isn't doing us much favours, but Manchester United back in it, and there's still time here. 20 minutes to go. And, uh, after what we saw on Sunday, like I said, you can't rule these guys out until that very final whistle. Still leading. The question is, can we hold on to this? And I should do it, and I feel going to cling on to that one goal victory. Come on, ref, is that final whistle? Come on, come on. Yes, there we go. Fist pump from Doxy on the sidelines because that is a massive away day victory at Old Trafford. Almost bottled it towards the end, but instead we hold on. The winning run continues and we stay with Manchester City at the top of the table. But like I said, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Just try and stay in the top four till Christmas. That's the aim. And we face them next. We've just taken their top spot and they'll be looking to take it right back. Biggest game of the season as we aim to extend our winning run here and go further clear of the champions. Man City and Dorset, biggest game this season. Come with you, Cherries. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, I see you. Ah, Kirkus, can you get that? No, 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 Hakimi. Just about beats him to it. Now we're in a bit of trouble as well because Kirkus is well out of position. Sil oh, Silver dancing around Vinicius. I thought he was going to come inside instead. He comes out with the ball roll. Haaland, what a save, Lunen. What a save. Marlon lost his clean sheet streak at Old Trafford, but what a stop. The Ukrainian, only four goals conceded all season long. What a start to his career in Dorset. What a save. Corner, Manchester City. This game has started off at a lightning quick pace. And that's that opening goal. Is not far off, I'm sure. Here's Bernardo Silva, causing the early danger for Bournemouth. They're going to step inside once again. And pegs it back in. Gavi on the edge, plays the one two, shot deflected, gets it straight, I can't clear it, I cannot get it clear, once again shot blocked and again it will come back to Matthew, I cannot get it clear, it's one of those moments where you just cannot get it clear, Haaland offloads, Doyle with the finish, Man City lead, it's one of those moments where you literally just cannot get the ball clear, no matter how many tackles you put in, no matter how many blocks you make, it just always falls back to the opposition. Man City strike first. You know that saying, luck will ban itself out. And, and last season, if you remember, we, we scored three own goals. 
<laughs> which were like ridiculous if you remember those pass backs I said it before like I don't I don't know if there's been something added with the patches but it has been a bit bizarre how it happened all in one season um, so I can't really complain but it is so frustrating when things like that happen as Erling Haaland steps in to make it to Biggest game of the season, but we have just been taught a huge and harsh lesson from the visitors. They've been dominating English football for many years. They're going for their fifth title in a row. I think you'll be at this point now. I don't know, man. I don't know. Steps to success. We're nowhere near their level yet, despite the red hot start. Delicious to. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't know. I don't know, we're, we're, we're getting there, we're getting there, but I'm under pressure in this game, panic truck crazy there, left it too late, gave him a third, capitulation in Bournemouth, we're not at this level yet, we're getting there, we're getting there, but a harsh lesson taught by the champions, we are not capable of being champions just yet, not in my opinion. Right, let's do a couple more and bounce back here. Uh, following game, match day three in the Europa League group stage in Belgium as we face KRC again. Get a win here and we should be all but qualified, even only halfway through. Come on, you cherries. I was going to say, when you've lost one, you need to make sure you bounce back in the very next one with form being so OP. All due respect to KRC getting the Belgians. Not a bad side. They've got some good players. Muhaid. Ah, oh, the centre half. We had the Almeria career mode. Van der Voort, excellent young goalkeeper. Mike Trezor on the flanks as well. And Zakiri too. It's, it's a decent side, but we should be targeting three points. Strong lineup out there. Anything less than a win. And that'll be a very disappointing way to, uh, to, to go in to that trip to the Emirates in our final game today. Great wall, Matty Cash. Pedro Nato must finish and does. Yeah, if you lost one, you've got to bounce back in the next one with form being so OP. Should get the win in Belgium. We're one nil up 24 minutes in. I can't believe we're still only leading by one, man. We've been in complete control. Dominated possession. KRC gang. I don't think they've seen Lunin's goal in the entire game. All we need is one goal to wrap this up. And we might get it here. We've substitute Beto denied by Van der Ver. 20 minutes to go. Feels like the points are wrapped up. But until we get our second, I'm not celebrating anything. Van der Ver. Well, we know he's a heck of a young goalkeeper. He's not allowing us to come away from Belgium with the three points just yet. Because he's making save after save, man. He is just stopping everything on his goal. But surely his efforts are going to come in vain. We've got them penned. We've just got to get our second to finish this, uh, this, uh, this game off. There's Cash. Finds Frederick. Oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> How is it still only one? Henry, lovely ball through. Play advantage, please, ref, because Beto has got Traore with him. Uh, sorry, Henry with him, and there's Traore. And oh my goodness, what a save, Van der Ver. I can't believe we're still only leading by one. We've had a whole host of chances, but Van der Ver has just saved everything. He just will not be beaten for a second time until he finally is. Marco Sanessi doubles up with a rebound goal. And Bournemouth will leave Belgium with the three points. Credit Van der Voort, though. He's made some brilliant saves in this second half. But that's going to do it. Three wins from three. And already halfway through. Surely qualification is looking all but in the bag. No, no, no. no. Come on, don't lose a clean sheet for Lunin. Ah. One of the most frustrating things for me in FC, conceding with virtually the final kick of the game. That infuriates me no end. I mean, you know, again, because it goes head-to-head -head before goal difference, in Europe it's not as big of a deal, but it's still so frustrating. It just shows a lack of discipline and concentration, you know? Right, still more. Our final game today, third versus fourth in the table. Arsenal away, still undefeated as we take them on in North London. Aim to get a big win here and keep ourselves in the top four. Come with you, Cherries. Quite an early injury. Vinny's just hit the deck and of all the players to go down. Well, I'd, I'd say there's two ahead of him that worry the most. Solanke and Clark, but Vinny in the back line is so crucial and that is a big, big blow. Oh, Lunin fumbles the, uh, the header and in the end, thankfully, it drops behind for a corner, but that is a, uh, a tough start. Considered a cheap corner, but most crucially, Vinny's gone down with hopefully not too bad of an injury there. Saka to Ben White and now... Gabriel Jesus with two red shirts to the right. Or three, actually, because Ben White's joined the attack as well. Saka steps in field. Bukayo. Jorginho shoots and Lunin with a fingertip stop. Turns it behind for a corner. No clean sheets in his last three games. Able to bounce back with one here. 
Excellent stop by the Ukrainian as Kirkes heads it away. I often say sometimes you need to know when a point is a good result and a draw is a decent, decent point to claim. This would definitely be the case. First draw of the season, yes, but I certainly wouldn't say no to it, especially on the pattern of play. It's, it's all Arsenal. Saka stepping in field, only ball, Odegaard. It was coming, it was coming. Arsenal lead with 22 minutes to go. Scott. To Tyler, can we find out that level? Uh, no, the final ball just hasn't been there. You see, in the top left there, the pass actually 80%. It don't sound bad, but you've got to remember these are three minute half, so it really should be higher than that. Because that's misplacing four passes in every five. Uh, sorry, one pass in every five. That's um, four places in every five. <laughs> Imagine that. Oh, Zabani, Solanke, Jack Clark, bottom of level it late. And he's one of our players of the season to the rescue. Come on! How often do I say it? Draws are subjective. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. In this case, it's a great point. With the ex-Spurs boy bailing us out at the Emirates Stadium to keep us in the top four, but it does come at a cost. Vinicius, our star centre half, breaks his toe in the process and he's done for three months. That is a big, big blow to our back line. But that will do it for today's episode of the Realistic Crimmer, guys. So big thank you for watching. enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like much love to you all have a fantastic day i'll return in the next one with more big games in the premier league aim to stay in the top four as we approach the halfway stage of the season we'll have the efl cup last 16 at home to sutton united it should be a banker against the league two, league two side and we'll play the second half of the Europa league group stage aim to qualify as group winners have a great day much love and i'll see you for the next episode very soon